Good morning on this absolutely gorgeous spring day. I'm Senator Noreen Evans. I represent the second Senate district. Um, thank you all for being here today in support of the California Environmental Quality Act, the nation's groundbreaking and leading community and environmental protection law. As we all know, Californians cherish their natural environment. We know it has built our riches and fed our souls with the spirit of the redwood forests, the wilderness in our mountains, and the warmth of our beaches. Our agricultural lands continue to inspire the masses and to feed the world. California has a proud history of supporting the public's right to know what is in the development proposals that are taking place in their own communities and often in their own backyards, and making sure that the public participates in decision making to preserve their quality of life and the environment around them. So how do we ensure that future generations inherit a cleaner, healthier California? How do we ensure that we leave California better than we found it? The answer is, and has been for over 40 years, the California Environmental Quality Act. CEQA does not guarantee a specific outcome. It does not guarantee a specific kind of development. Instead, CEQA guarantees process and procedure. CEQA empowers the individual to enforce the law. The public is the process of CEQA. CEQA is the Bill of Rights for an environmental democracy. CEQA has guided our progress for decades, and today our air is cleaner, our water is purer, and our trees are greener because the quality of our progress has been the deciding factor in how we conduct growth. Now, some say that CEQA stands in the way of progress. Some say that CEQA is abused. The question for us today as policymakers and advocates is, is this claimed abuse enough to give away the next generation's clean air and clean water, and the next generation's agricultural lands and open spaces and wild places? We must not confuse private profit with public good. CEQA protects the public good. Today, CEQA's results, decades after its enactment, illuminate that profitability and growth need no longer equal pollution and destruction. We stand here together today because California is our common ground, and we are here today united to protect it. Now I'd like to introduce to you Bob Bagelnorth, co-chair of the California Construction Industry Labor Management Cooperation Trust, and he will review some of the key findings of the report on the positive impacts that California has realized since CEQA's inception. Bob? Thank you very much, Senator. California actually has the uh, most stringent environmental laws in the nation. So many people have said that those environmental rules have stopped important construction projects, including solar and infill. The California Construction Industry Labor Management Committee, which I chair, wanted to know how much CEQA really impacted construction in California. So we made a grant to the University of Utah to find out two things. One, what has been the impact of CEQA on the California construction energy, energy industry since it passed? And number two, has CEQA been a benefit to California? So who is the California Construction Industry Labor Management Trust? Well, it's made up of labor and management. Labor is State Building and Construction Trades Council. There's equal number of people on it. The management people are the Western Steel Council, the California Association of Sheet Metal and Air Conditioning Contractors of North America, the Northern California Mechanical Contractors Association, Bechtel, one of the largest construction contractors in the world, and Calpine, an independent energy producer. So all of these people have an interest in whether CEQA is detrimental to construction or not. That's why we convened the study. Dr. Peter Phillips, uh, Utah, it was, is a preeminent professor in economics. He actually has studied construction for the last 30 years. He went to Pomona City College and he graduated from Stanford. He used to be the chair of the economics department for the University of Utah. We were really surprised with the results of the study. Dr. Phillips looked at the growth of construction in California relative to the rest of the world, the rest of the nation from 1939 forward, and he discovered that after CEQA was enacted, California's construction market expanded markedly compared to the rest of the world. That information can be found on page 18 of the study. This is a study, you should all have a copy of it. 
Many people have said that CEQA has stopped power plant construction. The facts are that 19% of the power plants that were started the permitting process in California were never built. They never got through the process. That seems like a high number. But when you look at what happened in the rest of the nation, you'll find 59% of the power plants that started the process did not get to construction. So obviously CEQA was not an impediment. Uh, there's something else going on here. And that information is found on page 30 of the study. Another myth is that CEQA stops solar construction. Well, there's more solar permitted in California than in Nevada, Arizona, and New Mexico combined. California actually has 36% of the solar power now operating in the country and 77% that's under construction. That information can be found on page 31. On the second question, was CEQA good for the environment? Absolutely it was. This is a case where California has had a cake, the growth in construction, and was able to eat it too. We have a clean environment, a cleaner environment than the rest of the country. California moved much quicker than the rest of the nation to eliminate coal and oil-fired plants and to go to much cleaner gas-fired plants, reducing NOx, carbon dioxide, and other pollutants. That's on page 27. CEQA has also protected our most important national Re, our, our most important natural resource, water. Prior to CEQA, power plants were water-cooled. After CEQA, inter, after CEQA interventions, air cool became the norm. So let me just give you an example of what that means. Just one water-cooled plant, La Paloma, in Kern County, when it's running at peak, consumes 7,000 gallons of water a minute. Now, if that plant had been done air-cooled, it would be 150 gallons of water a minute. That information is found on page 53. So CEQA was also responsible for the electrification of the Los Angeles Long Beach port. Ships entering the port now have to turn off their diesel engines, which are dirty and polluting, and go to shore power. All that came about because of a CEQA lawsuit, and you now have significant reduction in the pollutants in the Los Angeles Long Beach Harbor. There's less hydrocarbons, less sulfur dioxide, less uh, particulate matter, everything has been reduced. So has CEQA actually hindered construction? Far from it. If anything, it's facilitated greater construction, a cleaner environment, and a better quality of life for Californians. I will be available uh, for questions at the, end of the, uh, at the end of the rest of the speakers. I now would like to turn it over to Art Pulaski, who is the Executive Secretary Treasurer of the California Labor Federation, which represents the 2.1 million uh, members of organized labor in California. Thank you. Thank you, Bob Algenorth. I'm Art Pulaski, that's P-U-L-A-S-K-I, and I'm uh, Secretary Treasurer of the California. Of the California. Of the California. Even upset the nice bird, sorry. Of the California Labor Federation. I'm going to give you an example. When I was a little boy in a state other than this state, I played ball in a baseball field in the shadows of the Raybestos Brake Company. I played with a lot of the sons of the workers of the Raybestos Brake Company. And when we kicked up dirt as we slid into second base, we didn't kick up dirt. We kicked up asbestos tailings. Many of those kids are sick today. And if their parents had known about this as they worked, they would have been horrified. Now, and if CEQA had been enacted in that state at that time, that crisis would have never happened. Now, CEQA is under attack. CEQA is under attack by corporations and large-scale developers. They don't care about workers. They don't care about our kids. They care about themselves. They care about their profits. I want to be clear that CEQA is an, an attack on CEQA is an attack on our workers, it's an attack on our families, and it's an attack on our communities. That's why, really, unions are environmentalists. We have to be env environmentalists to protect our families and to protect our communities. We want clean air and we want clean water. CEQA protects us from massive amounts of pollution in the state of California. 
makes our workplaces safer, and it makes our communities cleaner. We reject all efforts to weaken this important law that protects all of us, no matter where we live in this great state. California is a leader in protecting the environment, our workers, and our communities. We're here to protect CEQA, protect us, not just for this generation, but for generations in the future. And I thank you very much. I'm going to try to fix this for the next speaker, since I blew it myself. Okay. Uh, Robbie, I don't want to subject you to this. All right. Sorry about that, folks. We'll try that. It's my pleasure to next introduce the esteemed leader of the State Building and Construction Trades Council, representing all of the building trades unions in the state of California, Robbie Hunter. Robbie. Good morning. Uh, my name is Robbie Hunter, and I'm the president of the State Building and Construction Trades Council of California. We represent uh, 375,000 construction workers in this state. And we have heard that CEQA is stopping projects, killing jobs, hurting the economy. There is nothing more important to our members than working. Uh, even during this great recession, we are here in California working. A recent EPA study that shows three of the top four cities uh, for residential infill in California, in the United States, is here in California. We have heard that allegation on CEQA. We looked at it. We have found that not only did it not hurt infill, we have the highest infill in the nation. So that's not true. We have to do everything we can to put Californians to work, but that does not justify the blind run at deregulation motivated, motivated by the wolves of business crying for deregulation. CEQA protects communities. The deregulation of CEQA would hurt the communities and give the acid pits, uh, Springfellow acid pits in Riverside was one of the catalysts that brought CEQA around. In, two, uh, eight, in 1984, I bought a house in Riverside. I bought it from a family called Stinson. The guy that lived there, his name was Russ Stinson. He was 35 years old. He was a cement mason. And him and his three children were moving out. I didn't know it, but he was ill. He lived there on a well uh, on the property. Uh, but when I bought the house, it was on city water. Russ, Russ Stinson died of cancer, as did children in the street that I lived in. We were directly below Spring Follow Acid Pits. That's what workers and that's what families and that's what the environment was. The owner of Spring Fallow had a rock pl plant almost without regulation. He opened it to a chemical dump. 36 million gallons of chemical waste from industry was dumped in there and ended up in the water supply. What we really have here is a cry for deregulation. We had the deregulation of the savings and loans in the 1980s, which led to a thousand de uh, savings and loans going out of business in the public, the everyday working person picking up 125 billion of uh, cost to us, the taxpayer. We had the deregulation of the 1990s of Wall Street and uh, banks and insurance companies. Those regulations were put in the 1930s under the New Deal because of the collusion of that industry that led to the, the Great Depression. We got rid of the regulation. It was a blind scream of business. We can't stay in business unless you get rid of this regulation. What happened? The exact same thing. They almost collapsed the national economy. And, two th and through the years of 2000, we almost went into the Great Recession again. We missed it by a whisker. Right here in the state of California, we had the deregulation of the electric grid. We had this dishonest business company called Enron coming into the state, put their hand up and said, get right, rid of deregulation, get deregulate, get rid of regulation. We promise we'll be good. We've all heard the, the uh, phone call tapes of the collusion of the... Uh, the executives of Enron turning off the electric uh, plants around the nation, driving blackouts to drive up their profits. Deregulation is never in the interest of the ordinary working person, the everyday worker. And the reason they call them an everyday worker is most people in California have to work every day to pay their bills at the end of the week. That's who we are. We're the ones that always pick up the tab for deregulation. At this time, I'd like to introduce Annie Nordoff of the NRDC and Sarah Rose of the League of Contrafacing Voters as the partners in this fight to save the California's environment laws. Thank you. 
Thank you. Uh, I'm Annie Nodoff with the Natural Resources Defense Council. Excuse me, I think we should just try turning this down a little bit. Do you have any, you know which one is the volume? The volume? It doesn't say Hold volume. on a second, folks. Oh, here. Is so that good. any better? Good. And you can yeah. still hear me, okay. Um, before I make my remarks, I just wanted to acknowledge and thank Senator Hannah Beth Jackson for joining us and also Deanne McEwen with the California Nurses Association. Uh, NRDC is happy to uh, stand here shoulder to shoulder with our partners in labor and tribal and business. Uh, we were successful in 2010 when we defeated Prop 23 together. Last year, we worked to pass Props 30 and Prop 39 together, and I think now it's great to be working together to defend the heart of California, which is our environment and our public health through CEQA. Uh, we've been talking about jobs and people uh, for the last couple of uh, comments, and I wanted to also remember that uh, California's environment supports a uh, very rich diversity of life, wildlife included, and we are joined today by the uh, Center for Reconnecting with Nature who have uh, brought a couple of uh, creatures who defend ver depend very much on California's clean environment. We have a peregrine and a, ha and a Swainson's hawk, uh, and I think that they are living uh, demonstration that we're not here alone in California, that we have a responsibility for protecting all life. Uh, and so we're very happy to work with our partners here and look forward to uh, vigorous debate and strong defense of CEQA. Thank you. Hi, my name is Sarah Rose and I'm the CEO with the California League of Conservation Voters. CLCV represents over 75,000 active environmental voters who share our vision of a healthier and more sustainable California. We work in elections, endorsing environmental champions and helping them get elected, and then we work with our legislators and our members to support an environmental agenda here in Sacramento. We know that environmental protection is a core value for all Californians across the state. Included in that is an appreciation of the connection between healthy communities and a healthy environment. We are happy to be here today with our colleagues in the environmental and labor and tribes and industry and public health. This is an example of how constituencies who sometimes are perceived to be at odds, but in fact share a number of common values, including a commitment to a clean and healthy environment for our families. There is significant power in this coalition assembled and we collectively represent millions of California families who deserve a voice in how their communities will grow. The California Environmental Quality Act is an environmental bill of rights for all Californians. CEQA is designed to ensure that people in every California community can understand how land use decisions will impact their communities and health and can hold public agencies and decision makers accountable to local and state environmental and land use laws. The California Environmental Quality Act gives every community a voice in development, whether it's where to locate an incinerator or a power plant. CEQA gives every Californian a right to weigh in. Those who would like to see California's environmental laws deregulated seem to want to silence that voice. This is, of course, the beginning of the session, and there is still a lot of work to be done, and we look forward to working with leadership and all of our allies here, and we look forward to using the goodwill that we've developed through these partnerships uh, between labor, the environment, and our other associated communities in years to come. Thanks so much. Hi, good morning, everybody. My name's Deanne McEwen. I'm co-president of the California Nurses Association. And as a certified public health nurse, and on behalf of the 89,000 direct care registered nurses that we are here to advocate in the interests, as is congruent with our duty to change circumstances that are against the interests or wishes of the patients that we care for. CNA has joined this coalition because it's about protecting the health of Californians. CEQA gives Californians a voice in where toxic facilities are located and it allows local communities to protect the air and water quality from those who would value profit over the health of the community. We're especially concerned with losing the ability for communities to use CEQA as a means of policing and protecting air quality as nurses see firsthand the effects of poor air quality on patients and improvements in air quality that has attributed uh, been attributed to CEQA because it's shown a uh, decrease in the number of emergency room visits 
by patients who suffer from asthma and other respiratory diseases. In this era of global warming, preservation and conservation, it's time we begin to conserve and restore the planet's most valuable resource of all, the health, safety, and well-being of the people who live and work here. Thank you very much. That concludes the remarks. I'm Bob Balganor. Oh, oh, we have, I'm sorry. I, uh, Good afternoon, my name is Marta Dina Arguello. I'm the Executive Director of Physicians for Social Responsibility in Los Angeles. A lot of the work we do is in South LA. It is ground zero for gentrification and infill development. CEQA is one of the tools that our communities use to learn about the projects, understand it, analyze it, and fully understand all the impacts. It is those communities that understand that increased traffic will not only mean more air pollution, but longer drive times to an emergency room three blocks from their home when their child is having an acute asthma attack. It is the communities that we work with that use this tool for democracy, to learn about projects, to understand their impacts, and to mobilize so that they can fully understand and participate in those decisions. I have seen CEQA be a tool for this beautiful democracy, where hundreds of residents show up at city planning commission meetings, where hundreds of community residents go to community planning school every weekend for a month to learn how CEQA works and how it can be a tool for deciding what is good in their communities. We have to understand that nature is not out there. It is us. It is the communities in urban, in urban communities that also need protection from CEQA. If we are going to do anything with CEQA as a health professional, we should be strengthening the health protections that are in CEQA so that communities can start addressing the history of disease in, that has been caused by bad air quality and bad land use decisions. Uh, it is in, very important that we start to understand that CEQA is, is not about lawsuits, and it is not about communities getting over. It is about communities being made whole and developers being held accountable to the harms that their projects start. One of the phrases in our community is really, better neighborhoods, same neighbors. CEQA is a tool to make our neighborhoods health sustaining and promoting, but be able to still be afford to live there and not be pushed out into the suburbs where we'll have to buy a more polluting car or use more or take three to four hours to get to our jobs where we used to live. That is what CEQA is. It is just a tool that provides information. The rest is up to us to organize and to mobilize, to understand the impacts, and to make sure that they're mitigated. That's on us. We need that tool. Buenas tardes. Me llamo Marta Dina Arguello. Soy la directora de, de Médicos por la Responsabilidad Social. Estamos aquí uh, como representantes de las comunidades donde trabajamos para defender esta ley, que es una de las únicas herramientas que tenemos en nuestras comunidades para decidir cómo vamos a construir nuestras comunidades. Los, estos documentos lo dan a luz todos los impactos de, pro, de proyectos para que nosotros en las comunidades podamos decir Esto nos va a impactar, esto va a causar, causar más uh, contaminación del aire, esto va a causar más tráfico y también para proteger las viviendas que tenemos, para que no los saquen de nuestros vecindarios mientras los hagan mejores y los que pagan los precios somos nosotros. Gracias. Are there any questions on the uh, labor management study? All right. Yes. You know, every law gets abused in some way. Uh, you can't stop abuse. There are people who go to prison and are not guilty of what they went to and get out. Does that mean you eliminate the judicial system? Absolutely not. Uh, you're, in a democracy, you're always going to have somebody who games the system one way or another. What's important is what this did for the state of California. Did it grow the state of California? Did it make a better environment? Is there a better way to do that? I don't know if there's a better way to do it or not. We do know that 40 years ago they got this right, that we're better than the rest of the nation. I'll just say, also just uh, point out the fact that there are already uh, economic pre penalties in CEQA for abuse of the statute and frivolous litigation. That already exists in law. If I could also, on that point, uh, I have a piece of legislation that would start to modernize CEQA and to bring it into the electronic age. I think that's something that everybody supports. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
You might want to ask these, but um, I was uh, told, my, it's my understanding that the nesting area that these birds depend on has been uh, saved as a result of CEQA action. Uh, in the foothills up near uh, Nevada City, correct? Central Valley nesting areas. Central Valley nesting areas. You could get some more details after this. All right, thank you very much for coming.